The ABC has been rocked by the deaths of three of its most senior news gatherers. The news team, including WA-born Paul Lockyer, were killed in a helicopter crash. The chopper exploded after crashing in sand dunes near the remote town of Marie, near Lake Eyre in South Australia. Paul Lockyer was one of the ABC's most experienced and most respected journalists. Born in Corrigan, he began his career in the ABC's Perth office and went on to cover some of the world's biggest stories, including the Khmer Rouge atrocities in Cambodia and the Sydney Olympics. In recent times, he provided extensive coverage of rural issues. Paul Lockyer was known in parts of outback Australia as the Pelican because he always seemed to know when the water would come. Tony Eastley reflects on a friend and long-time colleague. A country boy from Western Australia, Paul Lockyer began his career as a cadet at the ABC in Perth in 1969, quickly showing he could cover any story on any subject. And he said it would prevent a Governor-General ever again being placed in the invidious position of having to dismiss a government. He had a flair for going right to the heart of a story. As a foreign correspondent, he reported on the Khmer Rouge's atrocities in Cambodia and the exodus of the boat people from Vietnam. Vietnam holds hopes that 1984 can finally produce signs of economic recovery. In the ABC's Washington Bureau, he covered the political instability in Nicaragua and El Salvador. He spent the 1990s at Channel 9. If you can go back to someone the next day, especially if you've done a tough story, and they'll still talk to you, that's a test of whether you've done it right, and they always talk to lockers. Paul Lockyer was the face of the ABC's Olympic coverage. Amazing scenes uh, as the torch made its way down around the Opera House. Over the past decade, Paul Lockyer told the story of rural Australia like no other, winning the Centenary Medal in 2003 for his reports on the drought. Ideally, Paul would be standing under eight metres of water. He, more than anyone else I can think of in journalism, uh, probably bridged the gap between the bush and the cities. It was his warmth and ability to draw people out that made him an exceptional journalist. The people he interviewed trusted him. I was surprised one day to receive a card in the mail from him saying thank you to me. Well, I thought I should have been the one saying thank you to him. He was the first to document the devastation wrought on Grantham by the dreadful Queensland floods. A flood of unimaginable size and force tore this community apart. What happened here yesterday? <laughs> Armageddon. What he done for this town it was fantastic. He is one of the best journalists I've ever spoke to. That he could understand the emotion of a story where people might be devastated or suffering uh, without wearing his heart on his sleeve. Uh, people felt that he understood them when he was there to tell their story. From time to time, Paul Lockyer hosted news and current affairs programs. Hello and welcome to the Midday Report. I'm Paul Lockyer. But he always yearned to get back to the bush, especially with helicopter pilot Gary Ticehurst. Paul Lockyer had just finished writing a book about Lake Eyre and he said he had the best job at the ABC. His wife Maria says for 38 years, Paul was her soulmate and he was such a loyal friend to so many. She's got the boys around her, so they're good support, but it's a very tight family, so they'll survive. He had a career spanning 40 years, but Paul was not one to go quietly and ease up on his work. He was as enthusiastic as ever, ready to shoulder up for one more yarn, as he would say. Another story to tell. Gary Ticehurst and John Bean may have had lower profile careers, but their mark on the news industry was no less significant. As the ABC's chief chopper pilot for more than two decades, Gary Ticehurst not only covered the action, at times he found himself part of it. John Bean was the man behind the lens who was lauded for his versatility and his likability. He was the cameraman that everyone wanted to work with. Calm under pressure, John Bean was a mentor to many. John was an extremely talented and versatile cameraman who could shoot anything and shoot anything really well from news to documentaries um, and he could even shoot stills so he was a consummate professional. John Bean won numerous awards for his work including this Australian story in 2003. It was John's ability to, to, to win the trust of people in terrible situation, uh, win them over um, get, their, get their confidence and, and, and bring an achingly 
beautiful story uh, to our screens. Born and raised in Rockhampton, his skills took him throughout Australia and around the world. And now he was at the top of his game. For his wife, Landline reporter Pip Courtney, he was the most wonderful husband a girl could wish for. I fell in love with him on the road and adored working with him. Everyone will talk about how great John was as a cameraman, but I think what many people will always remember was that he was a great, great man with a great, great soul and he made you feel happy. John Bean captured the beauty of Lake Eyre for the ABC's documentary filmed last year. This trip was for another one and it was one he was looking forward to. Just before he left, he and I were in the crew room talking nerdy cameraman stuff together about how he was going to approach this. Um, and uh, now this with two other wonderful ABC people as well. Gary Ticehurst was the ABC's chief chopper pilot for more than two decades. He was right in the middle of big news stories, often directing the action. Even uh, a lot of cameramen are very, very happy. Gary puts them in the right place at the right time. They just have to pull the trigger and make fine adjustments. The ABC helicopter was the first to fly into flood-stricken Grantham in January. The houses were a tangled mess and it was described locally on the radio during that day and later of an inland tsunami. Well, that's exactly what it looked like from the air. From floods to bushfires, Gary Ticehurst was an integral part of the news gathering process. A veteran of 29 Sydney to Hobart yacht races, he was part of the rescue effort during the catastrophic 1998 race. Mayday, mayday, mayday. Here is Winston Churchill, Winston Churchill. Oh, Winston Churchill, Winston Churchill, ABC Chopper. Go ahead with your position, over. Six sailors died, but many lives were saved, thanks to Gary Ticehurst. He directed the uh, rescue choppers over to the boats and was standing by and calling the waves as these huge waves were rolling through. This morning, he saw things no one else could. He spotted two missing bushwalkers south of Sydney and he was critical to finding the bodies of four lost snowboarders. Gary was the quintessential aviator. He was always able to fly with the enthusiasm of a child, the wisdom of an elder and the eyes of a hawk. From news gathering to filmmaking, he flew missions for Mission Impossible 2 and The Matrix, landing in the heart of Sydney. A larger-than-life character, he also had a big heart for charity work with goodwill flights. For Gary Ticehurst, flying for the ABC was the best gig in the world. Rebecca Barrett, ABC News. This surely must be the best way to, to see Australia going along at low level in a helicopter. Uh, this is the Sydney ABC helicopter circa 1988, meticulously maintained with the most professional of all helicopter pilots in Australia. And for the last decade, this chopper has been used to cover the drought in eastern Australia. And you get really dramatic vision from up here seeing the drought move across the countryside. It's much more than a mode of transport, therefore. It's uh, also a filming platform and an office. So we use these phones, the ordinary phone and the satellite phone, to arrange our stories and to move around the countryside. Uh, if it's dramatic to see this country in drought, it's much more dramatic to see it when the seasons turn, if they, as they have now, to see it lush and green, especially around Lake Eyre. And at this height, you can pick up everything across the floodplains. So you see the dingoes down there, the emus and the kangaroos and the birds lifting as you go across the lakes. It's sensational. This, in a way, is the armchair of the nation. This was a team which travelled to some of the most remote and remarkable parts of the nation. The reporter, the helicopter pilot, the cameraman. Through their combined skills, they captured striking and heartbreaking images of Australia and the mood of the people. Droughts, floods, natural wonders.
You have to keep reminding yourself that this is the desert, usually a barren, forbidding place. It's remarkable enough when the occasional flood event turns the arid centre into shades of green. Extraordinary when it happens two years in a row. Environmental scientist Richard Kingsford travelled with the three men and was struck by the close bond between them. I had the real privilege of flying with them in the helicopter and, and watching the way they told the story. And it was almost as if they were all in sync. Um, you know, John would be filming, Paul would be saying, what about that angle? But Gary was already there looking at the monitors in, on front of his control panel. And I just marvelled at the way that they would be able to um, identify where the light was coming and, and be able to position the helicopter along a river system or up over a sand dune. After starting as a cadet at the ABC, Paul Lockyer worked around the globe and across Australia and was still passionate about his craft after more than 40 years. His overseas postings covered most of the world, from the United States to Asia. The Khmer Rouge claims that it has changed its ways of being... And the Conservatives be... see Texas as virtually a frontline state against the communist menace in the Central Vietnam America. Vietnam hopes that 1984 can finally produce signs of economic recovery. But it's much more... Former TV colleague and friend Ray Martin has known Paul Lockyer for more than 30 years. I used to say to me, you know, he had Peter Pan pill, he just got younger. While we got older, lockers kept getting younger. And you'd look at, he looked like he was 45 when he was 61. Yeah. <laughs> Do you want some help with that? Yeah, no, well, it is, uh, <laughs> that youthful exuberance came through as Paul told the stories of the vast country west of the Dividing Range. And I used to tell him he had the best job in the world. He, I love those bush stories. And he'd ring me up from wherever he was saying, guess where I am and, and you'd love to be here, that sort of stuff. But he wasn't just a bush reporter, of course. He, was, he covered the Olympic Games and he got a logie for ABC coverage of the Olympic Games. He used to do you know, a flower show for midday where he'd go out and talk to a couple of old ladies uh, on, on something for midday. Ray Martin says Paul Lockyer's character was the strength behind his journalism. One of the great tests of, of journalism, I think, is, you know, can you go back the next day and talk to somebody, especially if you've done something that might be critical? And he could be as tough as the next bloke in terms of doing stories. He just did it with a, with a velvet glove. Um, but, uh, but he could always go back the next day. And that's the great test, that if you've got your facts right and you've told the story accurately, even if someone doesn't like the story, they still talk to you. And they always talk to lockers. Paul, in, in a sense, um, thought like an artist despite being a, a documenter. You know, he, he, uh, he had a poetic and lyrical sense of what the landscape was about. With his passion for Lake Eyre, Paul Lockyer found a kindred spirit in artist John Olson. Wow. Just last week, Paul opened an exhibition of John Olson's series on Lake Eyre. The artist drew on Paul's work for his own. Um, when John, John was uh, doing these works, uh, when he was uh, in the studio, he, he uh, referred to uh, Paul's video, D DVDs, uh, to be able to you know, capture certain colorations, etc. But also, um, Paul's narrative was wonderful and also captured John's imagination as well for this exhibition. Paul Lockyer called the ABC helicopter his ute. At the controls was chopper pilot Gary Ticehurst. He started his flying career in the Australian Army in 1973. Engine recognised that sort of the flexibility offered by the helicopter. I'd like Gary to be remembered not just as a, a great bloke, but from a cinematographer's point of view, probably one of the greatest camera operators ever. I first met Gary uh, on the uh, Big Country episode called Pudding Pan Hill. Uh, the Pudding Pan Hill expedition was something that was led by Les Hiddens. And Gary at the time was a helicopter pilot um, uh, with the Army. Gary Ticehurst's work on this big country shoot led to him joining the ABC in 1980. A gregarious, much trusted figure, 
He transported reporters and crews far and wide. Uh, Sienna, this is the ABC chopper. Uh, I'm just uh, talking to Marine Search and Rescue at the moment. I po possibly would endanger your yacht to, uh, to make any assistance attempt at this stage, over. He showed the extent of his skills ABC during the tragic Sydney to Hobart yacht race of 1998 as he flew in treacherous conditions to locate and assist stranded yachtsmen. I don't think Gary ever thought about Gary Tysers particularly, you know. Gary did what, did the job that had to be done. Oh, it's the Churchill, it's the Churchill, ABC Chopper. Go ahead with your position, over. No, for a fact that he was there coordinating a lot of the rescue because he was communicating and uh, in one of the instances, um, I know that he stood by over one of the boats um, waiting for the rescue helicopter to get there. He wasn't going to abandon them and leave them. With cameraman John Bean on board, the result was always going to be remarkable. His colleagues describe him as a craftsman. The pictures he shot at Lake Eyre are magic. Well, to describe John Bean as a cameraman is an understatement. He was a very good writer. He was a technical whiz. He was a producer. He could come up with journalistic angles on a story. When I first worked with him, I was a bit taken aback because you would explain the story to him and he would come up with a few lines of investigation, perhaps questions you could ask as well. And I was a bit shocked at first and then um, thinking, oh, that's good, I might, that's, I'm glad I thought of that idea. Um, but never in an abrupt way, his manner was amazing. He had fantastic people skills, which is incredible when you think that camera work is an anti-social activity. You're putting yourself behind the camera there, you're in the eyepiece, you're detached from the rest of the world. Yet John could somehow transgress that. He, could, he had a rapport with the people he was filming but he could still be a master at this antisocial art and I think that's why his work was so fantastic. Quite simply, John Bean loved his job. Technically, he was fantastic. I worked with him up in the Torres Strait, a completely different shoot where you had time, where you had beautiful pictures. His work ethic was amazing. I remember working with him in the Darling Downs, we had a picture that was, a story that was a little picture poor and unfortunately for, for cameramen, some of the best pictures are at dawn. Um, and, but he would volunteer. He would say, no, I'll get up early tomorrow. Don't you worry, because this will look a lot better as the sun is rising. There's no, no other media organisation that does this the way the ABC does it and the way Paul Lockyer did it and the way Gary Tysurst and John were able to portray those images, find those images and tell the stories, many, many stories across our landscape. And you know, that's a great legacy. The team had headed back to Lake Air for what was to be the third and final instalment of the Lake Air series. They always talk to lockers, which is why, you know, he and, and Gary and John would be able to go back to these various stations. And, uh, and they'd arrive in the chopper and they'd bring a slab of, of beer and they'd suddenly find that there was a, you know, that uh, there was meat for them and they'd sleep out in the shearers' quarters or whatever on that go. But people were happy to see them and uh, because they're, you know, they told the truth, and they told it accurately and they were good blokes. Good blokes, true professionals, greatly loved.